Hey guys, Eric PC guy here, and uh, this is the second episode of our How to Design Your PC Desk uh, series. It's a tutorial, it's very detailed. If you've watched episode 1, you know that I will take my time doing the proper explanation, so do expect this video to be slightly on the longer side. However, if you are really serious about building your own PC desk, you will probably find that this is very uh, informative, and I try to give as much detail as possible, so you are as prepared as can be to build your PC desk without any an unexpected problems that you do not account for. Uh, if you followed the episode so far, you just know that this is the shape that we kind of settled on. It's kind of a, you could say it's a basic shape. I guess you could get more creative than this. Uh, however, it's a very, I find it a very nice shape once it's actually finished. Obviously you can play with it to your own uh, discretion, make it more elaborate. You can make this curve, this angle here more pronounced or less by, you know, going deeper or less deep. It's up to you, it's a matter of personal taste and also of function. As for the feet as well, they just go straight down. You could uh, also make them, you know, pointy or whatever. It's a matter of aesthetic and I will leave that design to your own. Uh, uh, discretion. Now, for the point of this video, I will be addressing mostly component placement, as well as things like where to put the fans, where to put the motherboard, how to address this, how to address that, and how to plan for that on the model, and how to represent that on the model. Now, for starters, you should keep in mind that if you are going to water cool your desk, you should definitely from the get-go prepare for that. This is because for, for example, for the radiator placement, you want to have your fans in a way that they will be able to, you know, that you will be able to place the radiator. So, for example, let's say you want to place a 360 radiator. You want to cut holes either at front or back, depending on you want the radiator. You want to cut holes big enough for three fans in a row there. If you are not planning to water cool, then cutting three holes in a row there uh, is kind of, uh, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing option uh, in most cases. So there is that to keep in mind. Also to keep in mind that you probably want to keep it symmetrical because there is a certain beauty in having, for example, the fans slightly symmetrical, not four fans here and then one here. Uh, instead, why not two? two, two, or three on one side, three on the other, you get what I mean. So there is some planning that definitely needs to be done, as well as for where goes does the motherboard go and all that sort of things. Now, in any case, for a case like this, you definitely need a lot of airflow. So let's start with the fans. You obviously, my preferred um, orientation is the airflow to be front to back, although you could make a case that side to side would also work, it would definitely. Uh, it is best front to back for also an aesthetic reason, because then you have the fans shining at the front if you go for LED, which I am assuming you are if you're doing a build like this, and the fans there at the back shining under the glass. If you have the fans at the side, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's in terms of uh, function, it is okay, but in terms of aesthetics, if it's your thing, sure, but otherwise, uh, I would not advise for it. So here we have at the front a surface of 28 centimeters. However, remember, and I will now hide this uh, surface if it lets me. Yes, however, remember that under that surface, only up until here, is actually the top of our enclosure. Underneath we have a little five centimeter gap between the actual bottom and this false bottom here that will be used to hide cables. It is also feasible that you could, for example, route your water uh, cooling under there so it's less visible. However, the water cooling is kind of meant to be visible, uh, in my opinion. 
besides if a leak was to happen under here you would have a very hard time spotting it and if you have power cables for example going here or if you choose to for example put your ssds or hard drives in this gap here then you would have an issue with the leakage from your water cooling accident going into the live components which would not be pretty so i do not advise to have your water cooling going there and i would advise to keep your loop if you go for one completely above the fake bottom. In any case, this means that we don't have the whole surface to count for as in terms of where will the fans go, because you don't want the airflow from the fans to go under there because it's kind of a waste. So let's measure from here to here and we have 21.7. So we could actually get away with putting 20 centimeter fans. Um, I would advise for it if you have uh, enough of a surface for that. Because they are move more air and they are quieter. On the other hand, they are not really uh, they are not really advised for water cooling because of the radiator sizes for it. So if you do that, I would put the radiators at the back as an exhaust, or you could just go with 14 centimeters at the front. I will go for the 20 uh, because I kind of would want my dash to be quiet. And you don't see a lot of builds with 20 centimeter fans. And then um, you can do it in two ways. You can do a little 20 centimeter box like I have done for the panels, 20 by 20. And you call it a day, you make it a component, uh, you group it and you slap it here. Or you can actually go here, I will let you see, to the side where it says components, search to the warehouse and type something like 20 centimeter fan. I am not sure if it will work. And yes, it does. There. You have an example of a 20 centimeter fan you can already use. Now, obviously, um, you are kind of at the mercy of whoever made this model. Yeah, so to rotate it, you go here and you actually have a rotate tool, which you then have to wiggle about to actually uh, rotate, as you can see. Now, you have to rotate into, obviously into the orientation that you want. And not just uh, randomly like I am doing. So uh, there we go. You have to find the right axis to actually rotate it, and you want it at a 45 degree angle because that's the angle that our thing actually is. Uh, I'm actually not sure. If it is at a straight 45, but let us drag it there and find out. Fit the spot. In any case, it doesn't have to be exactly uh, slapped on the angle, as long as you have a nice idea of where the fan will sit and how it will sit, and that it actually fits there. And as you can see, it does easily fit here with more than enough room to actually uh, screw it down and all of that. So uh, it is not a problem at all to have a 20 centimeter fan here. So what we are going to do is we, let's say that we want um, three 30 centimeter fans and uh, we are going to put that. So I say three because it would be either three or four if we want to stick to our goal of making it completely symmetrical. So uh, let us grab another fan and another fan and uh, I will put them in place off camera to spare you the time. Now the fans are set in place as you can see. Uh, it took me a while. Uh, it is difficult to move them to be quite honest as you will find out. But and they are as you can see they're not completely flush with the wood but the, the point is that you can visualize where they are and you can plan where they are and what to do with them. Now I will leave certain details out for now, like, you know, there's a cable that's going to be going from the fans to your motherboard or fan hub, so I apologize, and uh, it will have to run from here to under here somewhere, so you're probably going to have to do a little gap here and here and here for those cables to run through, but that is something that you can expect, and it was this was more about showing you things that you have to plan, so let's put these fans here, and uh, let's get, for example, uh, let's say a 360 radiator at the back. So radiator 360, you actually have quite an amount of them here. You can put the radiator itself or just the grill 
uh, where it will go but um, yeah uh, you probably actually uh, 360 is a bit cutting it short because that would mean 120 fans so uh, let's go like 280 420 uh, 420 radiator at the back now something that I do advise um, is to use cross flow uh, cross flow is basically uh, you see how this radiator for example has the intake and outlet for the water on the same side cross flow means that it has it on a different like intake here uh, and the water comes out on the other side, for example. So that makes the, the water cooling a bit simpler. You don't have to have cable uh, the water going here, here, and then out to the other side. It can just go one side, out the other, and you continue with the loop. And you can easier do a better looking loop, if you ask me, if you have it set up that way. Uh, now, to actually place the radiator, I will actually wait a second with it. I'll just leave it here where it is looking pretty. And uh, let's talk about motherboard and graphics cards. Now, motherboard, I will use a, an ATX form factor for this build. This is just a generic ATX, it doesn't matter. And uh, I will use the ATX for this build because ATX is, well, the most common uh, enthusiast sized. Uh, motherboard let's say i know it's perfectly doable to do a build with other form factors but this is probably the most used so what we are going to do is we are going to rotate it come on we are going to rotate it 90 degrees so that the IO, and this is just a representation, mind you, uh, it's definitely not any motherboard we know of with this structure. Uh, you might try to find your actual own motherboard. Let's say my, uh, I already checked my own Maximus 11 here, it's not there, or Maximus at all is not there. But uh, let's try uh, Aorus, for example. That's a motherboard. There's a gigabyte Aorus blah blah here that you could, if you have one of these motherboards, you could easily use them and uh, you know do the model for yourself. In any case, this is the back I/O here. It doesn't matter really um, what we use. Okay, I'll be nice and I will use the Aorus uh, card because it actually has an I/O there, so it's handy. So let's rotate it. Come here, you. I will grab it, rotate it 90 degrees. Come on, give me a clean 90. There we go. And now we move it on the red axis. No. Yes. We move it like this. Actually, the you cannot see very well. Okay. And uh, we kind of have to figure out exactly where we want the motherboard. So I am taking this radiator out of here for now. Because it's just in the way. And let's talk about motherboard placement. Now, there is something that you also want to decide, which is if you want your um, graphics card to be mounted on the motherboard, or if you want to have it mounted separately through a riser cable. If you want it mounted separately through a riser cable, that will cost you more space. Arguably, it looks better. Performance-wise, there's not much of a difference, so it's obviously a matter of preference. Uh, another thing to consider is how much exhaust exactly do you want, how, many, how big of a radiator you want. I put a uh, 420 here, but I think it might be a little bit cutting it uh, close, but we will see, and if need be, we will replace it by a 
360 or a dual because I wanted to do dual. I wanted two uh, radiators, one here, one here. Why? To maintain the symmetry and make the build work better, obviously, which is also um, an objective. But we shall see. I will uh, duplicate this radiator. I'm not sure where it duplicated to. Paste. Mister, where did you go? Oh, there you are. Okay. Oh, and there's another one lying on the floor there. You go away. So, I will come here. We want our radiators to stand up straight, naturally. So, Again, I want a 90 degree angle. There we go. And then I just want to move you, boy. Huh. It is precisely the size, the desk is precisely big enough for it, as you can see. And there we go. Our first radiator is mounted. Let's call it mounted. Uh, <laughs> uh, you could alter this so that, you know, like I said, if it's a cross flow, the tube comes here, goes out there. It's not really an issue at all. And um, for the second one, we will do the same. Come on, don't make my life hell. You come here. No, as you can see, two times um, 360, uh, 420 does not fit in this desk. It's a matter if you wanted to make the desk longer, you could fit it, but uh, as you can see, we can't. So to spare you all the time that I just wasted, I will just replace these by 360s off screen. Like I said, for these builds, I definitely advise the use of uh, cross flow radiators. That means that uh, the water is coming in one side and exit the other as opposed to on the same side that makes it easier to make a nice continuous loop uh, from one side to the other uh, in any case let us copy this radiator because like I said I do think there is a certain beauty in the symmetry so I definitely would want to have oh that's actually close enough Save us the trouble of actually um, placing, uh, having to place our radiator in the proper position. Now, obviously, these are not centered to the millimeter. Uh, I would want them to be centered when I was when I would be actually building. And you could argue that it is uh, somewhat dangerous to have the radiators this close to the motherboard. And I would agree with you, but um, just make sure those fittings are in there properly, hey? Like I said, you always have the option if you want to have the graphics card installed with a Heiser cable somewhere else. On this build, I will assume that you are not. So what you will need to do is you will need to cut a hole in the back here for the I.O and for the graphics card to actually be able to access the parts that you will need for that. I will go to, through that in proper detail on another video that I will do with the finishing touches to the case. In any case, this is more for component placement, like I said. Keep in mind that if you do not find the sizes of the type of thing that you need here, or if you don't trust these models to be correct, 
which I, I did not actually do it, but I recommend always double checking to see the sizes are correct. But you can always measure your own parts and make a little square. It doesn't have to be all detailed like this. Just make a little square with the sizes of your own products. I also do not recommend, for example, cutting the uh, uh, holes for the I.O. on the graphics card. Using measurements from here, I recommend seeing them in person and doing them in person by, you know, actually putting them there and checking if they fit. Uh, because otherwise you're just playing. This is very good to plan things, uh, as I might have said a few times before, but you have to see it in practice to make sure it actually fits. There could be a couple millimeter differences because of the placement of whatever, and then your measurements do not really fit uh, as well as you expected, and then it ends up to one part not really fitting in a hole that it should fit, and that leads to a whole lot of frustration. So, like I said, before cutting or drilling anything, when your actual real life desk, always double check your components, your measurements, and everything. Don't just trust on the planning. The planning is there to make your decisions in your life easier, not to guide you guide you blindly without actually uh, putting it in practice. Same for the fans. As you can see, I did not really measure them. They might not be spaced out perfectly, but they will serve the purpose that we want. And the purpose that you want is that just to see where they will go. Now, for the rest of the components, let's go for the storage uh, medium, let's say. Uh, let's go for, uh, let's say that you have two hard drives and two SSDs, uh, or something like that. It seems pretty reasonable to assume that a high-end PC would have two hard drives and two SSDs. So let's try looking for an HDD. Doesn't matter the model, they should all be the same type, the same size. Let us, uh, in the vein of keeping things symmetrical once again, let us uh, keep an, SS an HDD here and one on the other side, as well as SSD one here and one here. So, um, you know, the orientation is obviously up to you. That is not really the point of this. And uh, we shall keep our HDDs one here, one here. Component placement is also one of those things that um, it's your decision where you want to keep your parts. I would def the only thing that I really have to be playing with you is that it makes your life a lot easier if your motherboard I/O is to the back here, accessible through the outside, which mine is not, and it makes my life a whole lot more difficult. I am an advocate of keeping your GPU on the riser, so it's more on display and it's more you know out there but as you can see it uh, having it on this on a riser would mean that i would have to have it here and that would mean i would not be able to have the radiator here so there's a, that's also something that you definitely want to keep in mind is the real estate space in the back uh, i might call it here an alternative is to have the riser a bit more like you know not against the wall here but here in the middle and having the graphics card be where the HDD is, but that means that you will have to have a hole coming from the bottom for the HDMI that will go outside uh, a hole here at the back and then out to your monitor. It's a matter of preference. It's a lot simpler to just keep it on the PCIe lane there and uh, not have to worry about that. Anyway, trying to... This video will probably be very, very long again, uh, so let's... Um, hurry it up. I kind of want an SSD drive, but it's proving... difficult uh, to actually find. Solid state drive, maybe? Thank you! Perfect. Let's put one here. And another here. There is something that needs to be said. Uh, I would probably keep the wiring to the edges. That means that when you actually go and connect, the, you, you will have to drill holes at the, this metal 
that, that is false about them. I mean, to let the cables from the SSD and HDDs to go under here so that they can go and connect from under and then connect to the motherboard there on that side. Uh, actually, on this side, I believe. Yes, there are the SATA connectors. So it's up to you. You can run the, if you are confident in your cable management skills, you can run the cables here if you have like custom length cables and you make them all nice. Uh, and from here, naturally. Or you can drill a hole, route them under the, this false bottom, and then up here again. It might be silly if it's such a short distance, but it's up to you if you want your cables uh, running on top or not. I am an advocate for having them running under, which is the whole reason we have a fake bottom, but uh, it's your decision. If you have a fake bottom like this desk is planned to have, I would have the connectors facing to the back so that the holes here, the cables run into the holes and they are not even visible for you who are standing at the front. So that's something to keep in mind and that is a reason why I will rotate these hard drives at the 90 degree angle so that they will be facing oh it doesn't really matter what is front and what is back because this is just a silly little drawing anyway Now, it is up to you if you want to have them uh, like this or this. I would actually switch around and uh, I would have the SSD in the back because it is flatter. It's actually going under. And why does that matter? That matters for one reason which is that there are fans here and you want to see the fans because they're probably going to be nice RGB fans so the SSD being flatter um, you will be able to admire your fans uh, a lot more easier than you otherwise would be able to now you might be noticing that um, there is a very crucial component missing, which is our PSU. Now, you do have two options for the PSU, which um, one is to simply have it here on the top somewhere, like in the corner, like, you know, on a like a bad boy that is on punishment in the corner because let's face it PSUs are bulky they're ugly they have uh, little to no redeeming qualities in terms of aesthetics even if you have one of those fancy RGB ones they're still bulky and ugly and no one really wants to look at a PSU so um, as far as I'm concerned you have two options either you find like a small hidden corner where you can uh, just shove it in there and forget about it or you have or you have it like here, if this space is big enough, you have to make it bigger because the PSU is quite chunky. But you can, uh, or you can make a little uh, support here and have it here and just have the cables rotting into that fake bottom. It's up to you. Just make sure that it has some ventilation because it does have a fan to spin and it needs to be cooled. That fan will be enough. You don't need a PC fan directed at it or anything. But make sure that it is not in a completely closed off um, holder, uh, so to speak. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, I will personally address it in a different way, which I will probably show you in the next video if I don't want this video to be way, way too long. So uh, I will tell you about the PSU in the next video. For now, um, just be patient for a second longer, because I do have a couple more pieces to finish before I call this video a day and I will tell you what the next video will be about because we will not be done on this video. Now for now I will add a couple more pieces which uh, since there are radiators you're probably asking hey where is all that other stuff. Now hold your horses for a second. 
obviously we will need a reservoir and a pump. We will need an horizontal one, obviously, which there are, it is always challenging to um, fill an, um, there are horizontal reservoirs, however, that does not mean that you will find them here. So um, with that in mind, I will pick this one. Okay, obviously you will need something to mount it on. There are some special reservoir holders, obviously, but um, I don't see the need to put them in the video. And uh, you also have to ask yourself, you know, it's your own loop. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to have one reservoir, two reservoirs just for the looks? Do you want them to have like this or like that or in that orientation or that one? I personally... Uh, there's uh, there's two ways that I can see this happening, which is one reservoir here, one here, two pumps, because it's a long loop, so I wouldn't say no to two pumps, actually, uh, or a very strong one. Um, going from here into reservoir pump, no, that does not make a whole lot of sense to have them. I think, um, mm, let me think about this for a second, you probably would want it to go... Um, Uh, I will leave the details of the loop to you guys, as you might have noticed or seen or heard me say, I'm not an experienced watercolor or anything, so I'll leave the details up to you. I'll leave the precise positioning of the loop up to you. But I will, uh, however, put the reservoir and the pump in for the sake of them being placed somewhere and, um, you know, they're here. So uh, I will just not sure. There's so many options, but you know, I will just uh, pick one and uh, put it here. So, you know, placement and uh, orientation and all that to the winds. We have the reservoir and the pump. Uh, I don't know how you guys would do your loop. Uh, I would probably want to make it nice and elaborate and uh, good looking. So I would probably want it to go something like... Um, there has, uh, Speaking of loops, there has been a lot of videos done on this, but it boils down to all the or the component order. It does not matter a whole, whole lot. All that matters is that the reservoir is before the pump that's what matters so what i would do is i would let's assume so okay reservoir pump i would actually perhaps switch uh, let's see where it would flow mm. i would go reservoir pump and i would go up to cpu gpu and then here obviously so we're going here. No, this doesn't make a lot of sense. This is a problem for someone else. I will not go into the <laughs> loop order because that's besides the point. It does not affect the building of the desk. Uh, what affects uh, is where the things stand, but I will leave that to for you guys. You, the only thing that this affects is where the tubes go, for example, for the power for the reservoir. You just have to cut a little hole there. So it doesn't change a whole lot, this uh, whole conundrum. So in any case, all your things are placed here. Uh, I will give a thought about how the water cooling would go and adjust it accordingly next video if need be. But I will not um, grill you guys about that and I will not waste more time on it. In any case, this is how it could possibly look for a desk in terms of component placement. Obviously, the water cooling tubes are missing. Uh, you have to kind of think about how you want to do it. 
Oh yeah, I think I had a vague idea. Mm. You could do it. Um, yeah, reservoir pump. You can go into the radiator, out the other side, CPU, GPU, radiator, out the other side, and then go loop around like this back to the reservoir. Some of you might be like, okay, why are you going straight from the pump or reservoir into the radiator? It's not. Uh, why is it not going from you know it's it's cold there why is it going from the radiator yeah it's cold on the first pass once it actually comes from here to here this will cool it it will go back here this will cool it a bit more and it will go back here cool so like I said it does not matter much the order as long as you have a nice looking loop and the reservoir is before the pump so it, this is an idea you could also like I said do a system with two pumps two reservoirs how could you do this? Uh, you could, for example, push this more to the middle and have uh, here a pump reservoir, uh, uh, reservoir pump, sorry, go all the way here, reservoir pump, just to have, you know, a bit more symmetry and more elements to your loop. That is completely up to you. I do not want anything here on the sides and for a reason which I will show you on the next video. Partially to do with the PSU, partially not. I have a nice idea of stuff to have here on the side, which uh, I will, you know, let you guys see next video. And uh, yeah, for now, this has been Eric PC Guy. It has been a convoluted video, as mine usually are. I am designing this live with as little editing as cu and cutting as possible, so uh, I will actually cut a bit to try to make it a little bit shorter. So, um, I apologize for the long video, I try to make it as smooth and quick as possible, but it is not the easiest thing to work with this program, and I'm not very experienced with it either. Next video will deal with uh, details, mostly with details, such as PSU placement, a few nice details for the desk in terms of aesthetics, and hopefully it will be the final video of the series, depending on how well it goes, and uh, what else I have to add when I am done with it. This has been Attic PC Guy, thanks for sticking with me, I will see you next time. Like, subscribe, share the video if you liked it, and um, yeah, I'll see you next time.